Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome you all to the online support program from Army Public School and College Fort Road. This is week 5 and uh, we are going to study unit 5 the main poem. Learning objectives. Students will be able to state the main idea of the poem. They will be able to answer the comprehension questions, revise the concept of metaphor and personification and will be able to write the formal letter with the proper pattern. The Rain. It is written by W. H. Davies. W. H. Davies or Henry William Henry Davies was a Welsh poet and writer. Principal themes in his work our observation about life's hardship, the way in which the human condition is reflected in nature, his own tramping adventures and the various characters he met. He is using very natural and simple language. There is no artificial expression. He is talking about the simple joys and commonplace adventures one faces in the journey of life. First of all, we are going to read the poem, The Rain. I hear leaves drinking rain. I hear rich leaves on top, giving the poor beneath, drop after drop, tis a sweet noise to hear, these green leaves drinking near. And when the sun comes out, after this rain shall stop, a wondrous light will fill each dark round drop. I hope the sun shines bright, twill be a lovely sight. First of all, we will go through the meanings of difficult words. Rich leaves mean fully wet leaves beneath, under, this, it is. Wondrous delight, round drops, drops of rain, bright, shining, sight, view. The poem, The Rain, composed by W. H. Davies, is presentation of how rain falls on leaves of the tree. The poet has presented one of nature's most beautiful and attractive phenomena. The poem has two interpretations, apparent and deep. The poem is not merely a display of rain falling on the leaves, but between the lines there is a reference to prevalent social difference and injustice. Just like during rain, the upper leaves of a tree are lavishly watered by the rain and lower leaves quench their thirst drop by drop. Similarly, in a society, the upper social class enjoys the luxuries, amenities and convenience of life whereas the lower class has to suffer and live hand to mouth with even their basic needs hardly being fulfilled. The first stanza is the realistic depiction of our society. These lines offer a metaphor the rich at the upper level get a golden chance first and whatever remain ex extra is trickled down to the poor people. This romantic and natural scene of rain is not to be enjoyed by the poor who are shelterless so they don't admire the enjoy and enjoy the beauty and music of rain. Rain appears as a hindrance in their daily routine and gives them a tough time. In this stanza, the poet has used the word sweet noise. It is an oxymoron in this stanza because two opposite words are put together. It is sweet for those who take this rain as a pleasure, but at the same time, it is noise for those who are devoid of basic necessities of life. They can't enjoy the droplets because of them. Rain does not bring any joy, but it is a source of discomfort for them. After depicting the rainy scene in the first stanza, in the second stanza, the poet tells that when the rain will stop and the sun will come out of the veil of clouds, it will illuminate the environment with its light. It would be a wonderful scene as the dark clouds will shed and so with them the darkness as well. The dark round drops in the air or lying on the leaves will be filled with light. The poet is hopeful that the sun's light will be very bright because the brighter the sunlight after rain appears, the lovelier the scene gets. On the deep level, the stanza shows the hope of the poet that there would be equality in the society, just like the sunshine, which spreads all over the world, giving its sunshine to everyone. 
even to a dark round drop of rain hidden under a thick and rich green leaf. He is hopeful that after the rain of discrimination, there would come a time of harmony and equality. Dear students, the main theme of the poem is that W. H. Davies provides us a deep insight into the beautiful aspects of nature. He also brings forth the sufferings of poor and unequal distribution of wealth in the society. The rich leaves on the top consume the maximum amount of rainwater and then the leftover water is trickled down to the poor leaves beneath. Symbolically, it may refer to the sufficient availability of facilities and luxuries to upper strata of our society. However, the coming out of the bright sun after the rain points out to a period of happiness, hope and equality which will transform the sufferings of poor into prosperity and happiness. The coming out of the bright sun generates a spirit of optimism in the poet. He is hopeful that the bright sun after the rain will give rise to a clear weather and a wonderful rainbow. It may refer to a time of prosperity and ease when the poor will also be facilitated with the basic necessity of life. First of all, we will go through the meanings of difficult words. Rich leaves mean fully wet leaves beneath under this it is Task 2. Now you are going to do the comprehension. First of all, read the poem again, understand the theme and what you have to do is you have to write exercise A question that is related to the questions. You have to do write the answers on two sheets. The word limit should be of 25 to 30 words because you all know that you will get the questions from the poem that will carry two more. The poem, The Rain, composed by W. H. Davies, is presentation of how rain falls on leaves of the tree. The poet has presented one of nature's most beautiful and attractive phenomena. The poem has two interpretations, apparent and deep. The poem is not merely a display of rain falling on the leaves, but between the lines there is a reference to prevalent social difference and injustice. Just like during rain, the upper leaves of a tree are lavishly watered by the rain and lower leaves quench their thirst drop by drop. Similarly, in a society, the upper social class enjoys the luxuries, amenities and convenience of life whereas the lower class has to suffer and live hand to mouth with even their basic needs hardly being fulfilled. The first stanza is the realistic depiction of our society. These lines offer a metaphor the rich at the upper level get a golden chance first. Now we are going to study about the formal letters. A formal letter is one written in a formal language and follows a certain specified format. Such letters are written for official purposes because they generally stay on record to authorities, dignitaries, colleagues, seniors, and not to personal contacts, friends or family. It has a very specific and formal pattern. The difference between the informal letter and formal letter is that in informal letter you have to address, you have to write only the external address. But in the formal letter you are going to write the external address as well as the internal address. Now this is the pattern of the formal letter. First of all you will write the exam 
the external address that is the examination hall city abc and date then you will write the internal address the internal address includes to whom you are asked to write for example if you are asked to write to the director you will write the director if you are asked to write the letter to the manager you will use the word the manager so and if you are writing the letter to the editor definitely you are going to write the name of the newspaper if you are going to write about uh, write the letter to the manager you will uh, write you will not write the name of the newspaper you are going to write the name of the organization so after that you are going to write the subject that why you are writing this letter and the salutation will be very formal you will not write dear sir or dear madam you will directly write sir or madam or respected sir or madam you will write your body of the letter in two paragraphs in it, the language should be very formal there will be no slang used in the formal letters and write the letter to the point that states the problem that highlights the issue that highlights the topic that is being asked from you to write and in the end you will write you will complete you will not write yours truly you will not write yours obediently you will write yours truly and exercise you are not going to write the name your name because it is not allowed in board your task for of this week is to write a letter to the editor of a newspaper on cell phone addiction among teachers now dear students be very careful about the pattern be very careful about the punctuations your language that is being used in the body of the letter i hope that you will find this tutorial effective wish you good luck and allah hafiz